Welcome to the Noify Complete Guide video. My name is Taryn and I'm going to be showing you the basics of how to set up your Noify account and then how to enter and track a job using all the different parts of the Noify software. We'll start by going through our admin section to make sure our account is set up correctly. Click the button in the top right, go to admin section, and we'll start in company. Here, you can put in all the information about your company, like its name and address. The information here is going to be used whenever you're creating documents out of Noify, such as your proposals and invoices. This way, any changes you make in this section will automatically apply to future proposals, invoices, purchase orders, and anything else that you send out of Noify in the future. Next, you can also set your hours of operation in Noify to help when using Noify's scheduling features. This way, the days that you're not open don't show up on the calendar and employees know what time to start and stop work. And additional information included here can also be displayed on any documents that you send out of Noify. Next, we'll go to our Structure tab. Here, you can define how you group different users in your account, and then you can generate groups so that it's easier to schedule and move employees throughout the system when you're using tools like your scheduling in Noify. In this case, I'll choose to organize into teams and I'll create a team A and team B. And now we'll set up our users in Noify. In the users tab, we'll have the ability to create, edit, and manage users of our Noify account. This is where you can give different employees different levels of access to Noify. Clicking on an employee name will allow us to make edits to their access and set things like our department, which we defined earlier. You also have the ability to add a new user with the green Add User button at the top of the screen. When adding a new user, you'll have the ability to select between regular access, mobile only, or no access. If you choose regular access, then this user will have access to the web browser app version of Noify which will give them the ability to enter things like bills, invoices, purchase orders, and do other things to help them track jobs. You'll be able to set their permissions down below based off of the different fields in Noify that they need to be able to see. You can set the user's role, which helps when tracking their cost versus budget in a job, and the direct manager will be the person that approves any purchases that they create that go above the value of their approval authority. The first permission we'll see is whether or not this user can view and manage and pay vendor bills. Then there's a permission for invoicing clients, tracking their own time, creating proposals or contracts with clients, if they schedule company resources or employees. You can control whether or not they can view financial data or the status of your QuickBooks sync. It's worth noting that they don't need QuickBooks for this access. You can also set them as a foreman if they approve other people's time cards, if they have the ability to create jobs and budgets, or if they're an account administrator, which gives them access to this admin section where they can make any of these changes themselves. If this user is mobile access only, then you'll see the permissions are limited to just tracking time for themselves or for other people as a foreman. Foreman Access will also give this user an upgraded version of the mobile app with more project management features available to them. And then if we create a non-access user, you'll see that this user no longer needs to have an email associated with their account since they don't actually log into Noify. We can still track their labor cost and Foreman can enter their time, but they don't log into Noify themselves. For this user, we'll continue with a user with mobile access to Noify only, and when we enter their email, it'll help them log into Noify. When we hit Add User, we can either send them an automatically generated email from Noify, or we can set a password for them and send that as well. Once the users are added in Noify, we'll want to go to the tab that's labeled Rates and Resources. This is where we set up the job costing loaded labor burden to be associated with every user in our account. Our user we just added is showing up here, we have the ability to enter in payment information so that whenever they track time, we know how much it's affecting the cost of the job. You'll be prompted for a base rate as well as other values to factor in and the rate on the far right under the cost per hour column 
is going to be how much is associated with the cost of the job for every hour that this user tracks. Once your rates are set, you'll have the ability to set overtime rules for your account so that Noify can prompt you to split entries into straight, over, and double time and have a job cost accordingly against each job and show up like that in your reports as well. The last section in this admin tab is roles and applicable rates. This is where you can define the different types of roles of employees that you have in your company and how much you bill for their time per hour and how much you estimate their cost when you're budgeting a job. The billing rate will be the default rate that you charge customers for employees under this type of role in a time materials job and the budget rate is how much you estimate per hour when you're creating a budget before creating a contract for a job. And you can leave this blank if you'd prefer that it's the average of every user under that role. Next, we'll go to the Customize tab. This is where you can customize general settings that will apply across your entire Noify account. First, you'll have the ability to upload a company logo. This will be applied on any documents that are generated out of Noify, and you can upload a file in a JPEG or PNG format. Next, We'll set up where our numbering starts for purchase orders and invoices generated through Noify. You enter what the last number you used is, and when Noify creates this type of document, it'll automatically use the next number in succession. So if I set 1000 as my last invoice number, the first one I created in Noify will be 1001. This is also where we'll be given the ability to enable or disable AIA style invoicing in Noify. And we also have the ability to turn on the service jobs module if we do small, single day service ticket work. You can see that there are a lot of other customization settings here, and if you have any questions about them, please don't hesitate to reach out to support at noify.com, and we're happy to answer any questions you have about these. In the customized settings, you'll also be able to set up tax rates that you'll be using when invoicing out of Noify. And if you're integrating with QuickBooks, these will automatically be pulling from your QuickBooks account into Noify. If you need to connect to QuickBooks, you'll go to the QuickBooks tab in Noify, and you can click where it says Connect to QuickBooks. When you click here, it'll automatically look to see which QuickBooks account you're logged into, and it'll make sure that the connection is up and running. Once this connection is set, Noify will automatically grab any clients, vendors, and products and services that you have in your QuickBooks account and automatically add them to your lists in Noify. The last tab that we'll cover in our admin section is the subscription tab. Here we can view what plan we're on, how many active jobs we have, and what the breakdown is of our monthly billing for our Noify account. Now that we've gone through the basics of setting up our Noify account, We'll cover how to add, edit, and manage your lists of clients, vendors, and products and services in Noify. We'll start with clients by clicking the Clients button in the home screen. This will show us a list of all of our existing clients in Noify, and you can click Add New Client at the top of the screen to add a new client to the database. All that's necessary is a client name, but you also have the ability to enter an address so that when you create new jobs with this client, it can automatically be set to their location. You can also have a contact name that's separate from the name of the company if necessary, the best phone number to contact them, and the email that you set will automatically be added whenever sending a new type of document, whether it's a proposal or an invoice or an RFI to this customer. Once this information is set, you'll also have the ability to add additional contacts to this client's information. Once we click Submit, this client is now added to our client database, and if we ever need to edit this client information in the future, we can click the pencil in the box icon to the right of their name in the database. If we ever need to add additional contacts to this client, we have the ability of clicking their name and we'll be able to enter additional contacts along with their email and phone number so they can be viewed and used whenever sending out documents from Noify to this customer. This way, when you're sending a proposal, you have the ability to choose which contact at this client you would like it to go to. Next, we'll cover how to manage our vendor database in Noify. Similar to clients, we can access the vendor screen from our home screen 
and we can see a list of all of the existing vendors in our account. And we can add a new one with the green button in the top right corner. Similar to adding a client, the only mandatory field is the vendor name, but you also have the ability to enter information such as the vendor's address and main way to contact them. These fields can be referenced when generating purchase orders through Noify, so they don't need to be entered when generating each purchase. If this vendor is a subcontractor or a 1099 employee, you'll be able to check this is a subcontractor box so you can track their cost as a sub or you can set them up with a role just like in our admin section for tracking them as a non-access user. If you need to edit or ever remove a vendor from your list, you can click the pencil in the box icon to make any changes and the button at the bottom of the screen will make this vendor inactive. When entering and tracking subcontractors in Noify, you'll have a couple different options on how this can be managed. First, we'll use Ernie's Electrical Contractors as our example. You'll see that when I edit, the Is a Subcontractor box is already checked, and if this subcontractor is a 1099 worker who will be tracking time, we'll want to make sure that they have a role so we can track their time against individual budgets inside jobs. If they're only doing contract work, however, we can disable the resource so they don't show up in our time tracker. We also have the ability to add additional contacts to each vendor, and for subcontractors, you can upload documents that need to be stored on file with this vendor in the system. If we click on the name of a vendor that's marked as a subcontractor, we have the ability to upload a document and then once a document is uploaded, we can mark what type of document it is and when this document expires. Setting an expiration date of a document that's associated with a subcontractor will show up when we run a subcontractor's report and it will also let us know when we're entering a subcontract into the system if any of their documents have expired. If you need to run a report to see which subcontractors you still need to get new documents from, it's at the top of the list of vendors. Going back to our home screen, we'll now learn how to manage our catalog. Clicking Catalog will pull up a list of all of our current products and services in our Noify account. We'll start by adding a new product. Click Add New at the top of the screen and then click Product. From here, we'll be prompted to enter some information about this product, such as its name, how much we charge for it, how much we usually spend on it, and what its item number is. We can also enter in descriptions as necessary. Any products that you have in Noify should be things that you're frequently purchasing to make the budgeting process easier based off of how many items that you're buying and what their usual cost is. Next, we'll add a service. Service items can be useful when tracking how much revenue we're gaining from different services that we provide to clients. These can be used throughout the system on both the budget and contract side of Noify, and your default scope of work can serve as a work order when assigning different employees to phases that are using this service item, and it can also carry over onto the contract to give the client more details on what you're performing inside this service item. When adding a service, you also have the ability to make a service template. Service templates are used for estimating the cost of a job based off of a number of units. When adding a service, select this is a template. The majority of setting up this service will look identical at first, but you'll be prompted for a unit name of this service. Once you have your unit name in, you'll be prompted to enter a price that you charge per unit and then how much you generally spend in labor, materials, and subcontractors if necessary to complete this service per unit. Later in this video, when we're generating our first budget, we'll show you how you can use this service template to more quickly generate each phase of a job. Aside from just keeping a list of products that you're frequently purchasing, Noify's parts section can also help you track quantity on hand. You can add a location for each different inventory that you have. We'll call this one warehouse. And then you can select items from your catalog that are gonna be in this inventory and how many of each item you currently have in that location. We'll be able to use these items on jobs and see the current quantity on hand decrease whenever one is associated with the project. You'll also be able to generate purchase orders 
and have it point to the inventory location instead of directly to a job if necessary. Now that we've set up our account and covered how to add and manage our clients, vendors, and catalog in Noify, we'll cover how to add and track a project using Noify. We'll start by clicking Contract Jobs in our home screen. From here, we'll be able to see all of our jobs that are currently in Noify, their current status, and an overview of their cost, revenue, and profitability right now. Clicking on each chart will show you a more detailed breakdown of the job's current cost and revenue. And if you want to filter this screen to see only jobs of a specific status, you can click the filter at the top of the screen. To add a new job to this list, we'll click where it says Add New Contract Job in the top right corner of this screen. You'll be prompted to add a job name and know if I will suggest one if you've used a numbering system in the past and we'll select a client from our database. Once your client is selected, you'll have the ability to select which type of contract you're signing with the client. Fixed price will allow you to do detailed progress invoicing and change order management. If you choose fixed price with AIA style billing, it'll have a similar workflow, but generate an AIA style invoice document. Cost plus contracts can allow you to generate time and materials billing or other custom forms of billing and maintenance contracts can be used for recurring service appointments that you agree upon with the client. We'll use fixed price for this job and we'll be prompted for what job costing style we want to use. Job costing styles control the workflow of how we build a project in Noify. In Symbol and Advanced, we build a contract first and Noify will generate a project plan for us. If we use Professional, then Noify will first prompt us to budget and estimate the cost of a job and we can use that information to help us build our quote. The remainder of the fields when setting up a job are all optional. We can set a bid due date to have it show in the calendar, and a scheduling color, which will also show when this job is in our calendar. We can assign a sales lead and project manager, and if necessary, limit these users to only see their own projects. And setting a job address will help us know if employees are checking into the right location when tracking their time with the Noify mobile app. Once we use the professional style of job costing, Noify automatically pulls us into plan and track and we'll start this process by building a project plan and budget. Your project plans can be broken down to job phases. Each phase will have its own budget inside the job's total budget so you can track your costs in more detail. We'll call the first phase site prep. You'll see that Noify prompts for a service item from my catalog so we can have consistent naming conventions as necessary. Then we'll be prompted to enter in a material, labor, and subcontractor budget for this phase of the job. You can see that this updates the total budgeted cost of this phase, and I can see it as the total budget for the job so far. When building phase, I can also enter a work order, and this would automatically pull the default scope of work from the catalog if we had any set for site prep and demolition. These work orders are visible on the mobile app to anyone who's scheduled on this phase, so you don't have to retype this whenever scheduling a worker. If we want to build a more detailed budget for a phase, we have the ability to itemize out our materials and labor as well. When I click Add Materials, we can search the catalog for different items that we plan on purchasing, and the catalog will automatically pull in their estimated cost. This way, I can type in the name of an item and a quantity and using the unit cost from the catalog, know if I will build a materials budget for me. You can see that as I add an item, it's automatically adjusting what we have set as a materials budget at the top of this phase. Later, we'll be able to use this list to help us create purchase orders and track our material costs as well. To build a labor budget, you can itemize out a list of hours necessary to complete this phase as well. Click add role slash resource and you can either choose a generic role or a specific employee of who's going to be working on this project. We'll stay generic with this one and select different roles. I've selected foreman and tradesman, and you see it automatically pulls our budget rate from the admin section. So all we have to do is enter in a number of hours that we expect we'll need out of each type of employee, and it'll automatically generate our labor budget for this phase. The last way we'll generate a phase to add to this budget is by using the service template that we created earlier. I can click where it says use service template 
select the template we created, and enter in the number of units that we need to budget. Know if I will use the budget per unit that we set up when building this template and automatically generate a material and labor budget for this job. And I can always make adjustments, like in this case, adding a subcontractor budget to this phase as well. Once I save changes, this job will have a total estimated cost of completion and it'll be broken down to material, labor, and subs. And I'll be able to use this information to then generate a proposal to send to my client. To get started building a proposal, click where it says Create Proposal at the top of the screen. You'll be prompted to use Project Plan Phases, which means Noify will automatically start generating the proposal for you based off of what you built in your budget. This is where information stored with the client will automatically populate the proposal, and you can add additional information about this proposal so it displays on the document that's generated. You'll see that you have a line item for each phase of the job, and you can write in the price, or you can write in a markup percentage and it'll take the budget from plan and track and automatically mark up this item and put a price in for the contract. Once the marked up pricing is set, you still have the ability to adjust any items in case you want to increase or decrease pricing and just use the markup as a guideline. So if we want to change the total value of framing, we have that option and Noify will simply warn us that it's not matching the exact markup. We can also click Enter Breakdown or Bill of Materials and automatically pull a list of our labor and materials from the budget to give a little bit more detail on this line item when we're generating the proposal to send to the client. Now that we have our line item and pricing in, we also have the ability to enter terms and conditions to be included on the document that's generated out of Noify so that when this is sent out for an e-signature, they're signing along to the terms and conditions as well. You'll see that if we click send out for signature, Noify shows me a preview of the document that's generated, and it can be sent right to the customer for approval through Noify. I'll send this to myself so we can review the process of having this e-signed by a customer. The job will then automatically switch itself to the out for signature status, and we'll be able to see when we sent the proposal and whether or not they've responded. And I can click send reminder if they haven't gotten back to me and the bid is about to expire. I also have the ability to mark this as active or rejected on my own without having to get a client response. The client will receive an email with a copy of the proposal and a link to view and respond to that proposal. From inside the e-signature link, the client can accept, review, or reject a proposal that's sent through Noify. They can enter in their name and title. And Noify will email you back to let you know that you won the proposal and it will switch the job to active automatically in your Noify account. Now that the job is active, we'll be able to start tracking all of our actual costs against this job versus the budgets that we had initially set up when building the plan and track section. To start tracking these costs, we'll go to that plan and track section where we can currently see that there's zero dollars of committed cost to date. The first way we'll add cost to this job is by using a material allocation. Going into the Materials section and clicking Allocate Materials is the easiest way to quickly add material cost to a job without generating any kind of purchase order or bill or other transaction. In this case, we'll associate a dumpster rental with our site prep and you can see that it increased our job cost $1,000 for the amount that we allocated. Another way we can track material cost against the job is with purchases. We can use our budgeted list of items from earlier select the items that we want to purchase and click Start PO Process. In the Add New Purchase screen, we'll be able to select what type of purchase we're entering, whether it's a purchase order where we'll receive a bill, an expense that was paid for cash or a debit card, a credit card transaction, or reimbursement where an employee pays for the materials themselves and the employee is paid back for the material cost. In this case, we'll choose Purchase Order and we'll select the vendor. You'll see that Noify automatically populates the purchase order from the material items from our budget. And if we need, we can set additional information like the purchase date, if it's different from the date that we're entering the purchase. We can also set a PO number if we need, and Noify will automatically number. And if necessary, you can verify whether or not this PO number has been used before. 
In our Uploading Documents section, you can also upload any receipts that you received when generating this purchase if it's something that you're recording from previously. When I hit Submit, it'll automatically generate a purchase order and add cost to the job, and I can email the purchase order document that's generated directly to our vendor through Notify. You can also make adjustments to the purchase order document in this screen. Under Advanced Settings, we can choose whether or not we want to include pricing on our purchase order in case we're getting a quote. We can also adjust our shipping address as we need. And you can include additional information that goes along with the purchase order if necessary in the Comments or Special Instructions box. Now we have an open purchase order in our account. The cost has been added to the job. And if we need, we can also mark when materials have been received inside this purchase order. Next to Email PO to Vendor, there's a drop-down menu that lets you select Mark Items as Received. And as items are received from this purchase order, you can input this information here so it's stored in Noify. You'll also be able to view this information inside the project's plan in case you need to reference it on the job itself. When I click Manage Active Purchases at the top of the screen, I can see all purchases that I currently have outstanding that haven't received a bill against them yet. And I'll also have the ability to mark items as received or email out this PO from this screen as well. When the vendor sends a bill for these materials, we can log that and notify as well and it'll close out the purchase order. To add a new bill, click where it says Add New at the top of the screen and then click Bill. We'll have the ability to upload the bill document if we have a PDF that we want to store in Noify. And we can either process by vendor name or by PO number based off of how we want to reconcile our bill with our purchase orders. When I put in the name of the vendor, Noify will automatically pull up all of my outstanding items with this vendor. And I can enter in additional details like the bill's date, invoice number, and payment terms so I can see when it's due. To mark items from purchase orders as included on this bill, you hit the check icon next to each line. You also have the option of adjusting the unit price when logging a bill, so if the value of the bill is different from what you logged in the purchase order, it'll adjust the job cost accordingly. And if we need to log a bill against items that weren't purchased via Noify, we can click Add Item and add lines to this bill without having to have a purchase order for reference. You'll select the job and enter in the bill line details and it'll automatically add this to the cost of the job and include it in the value of this bill. When we click verify and submit at the top of the screen, it'll close out the purchase order if it's been completely billed against and it'll open up a new outstanding bill with this vendor. When finalizing, we'll be automatically brought to the bill details screen where we can see the different purchase orders that this bill is logged against and their current status. In this case, the purchase order is closed since we've logged bills against every item in the purchase. We can see that this bill is currently logged as outstanding because there are no payments against it yet, and when we pay the vendor, we can click Record Payment, and we can enter a partial payment by adjusting the amount if we need, and we can record this payment and notify, so it'll close the bill and know that we no longer owe the vendor for this outstanding balance. Clicking Manage Bills at the top of the screen will show us a list of all outstanding bills that need to be paid along with what purchase order they were for and who the vendor was that we created this bill for. We can record payments made against bills in this screen as well by clicking the checkbox to the right hand side of the screen next to the corresponding bill. We also have the ability to view bills that have already been paid by clicking Show History at the top of the screen and we can run a bills report to get records of any bills that have been logged in Noify and their current status. Now, to check on how this has affected the cost of the job, I can open up the job again through my search at the top, and looking into Plan and Track, I'll see my current committed cost to date, and I'll see it versus the budget that we had set up, and I can see that it's currently all material cost, and I'll be able to see which phase these material costs are all pointing to to date. Next, we'll get into labor costing. Labor costing will all be managed through time tracked from employees. So if I go to a phase and click enter time, it'll pull up a list of my resources and I can key in hours that employees have spent on this job today. And if I go check on the status of this job, I'll see an update in labor cost based off of that employee's labor rate times the number of hours that they've spent so far. 
If employees are going to be tracking their own time in Noify, you can use Noify scheduling tools and click Schedule Resources to assign jobs and specific phases to each employee so they know where to track their time each day and what they should be doing. We'll go ahead and pull up this job and we'll schedule the site prep and demolition and start by assigning dates to the phase. Once this is set, it'll add that phase to the calendar and we can grab a crew from the left hand side of the screen and assign them to this job full time. This means that they'll be scheduled for every day that this phase is scheduled for. And I can click the button in the bottom left corner of Noify to send a notification to each of these employees via email and via a push notification that goes right to their app on their phone. Now we'll schedule another phase of the job so we can determine which dates we're going to get to which pieces of this project and be able to assign specific phases of the work to specific employees. Once this is in the calendar, we can assign employees to it again. It could be some of the same employees or different users. And this time, we'll say custom time. When we do custom time, we'll be able to see which users are already scheduled when we're trying to add them into this phase, and we'll be able to adjust their start and end time so it doesn't automatically schedule for the entirety of the day. We also have the ability to add scheduling notes and push notification to their phone from here as well. Now if I'm in the time tracking module, or if I go to add new time by clicking add new and then time, all of my scheduled employees will show up first, so it's a little bit easier for me to get entries in as fast as possible. I'll choose an employee, and their scheduled jobs for this week will show up first, but any jobs that they weren't scheduled on I can find by clicking add new activity. If I go to the foreman view, where we entered time previously, I can click which phase of the job, and based off of the day and the schedule, I'll see the employees who are scheduled to work here first. Any of the hours that I submit here will automatically go in for review. And if I want, I can track time on a different phase. We'll pull up the framing phase that we built earlier. And we'll see that no one's going to show us scheduled. But if we change the date to one where there's people on the schedule, I can see that they pop right up to the top of the screen. You also have the ability to enter time using the check in and check out view. If users are tracking their time using the smartphone app, this view will also show their time in, time out, what job they were on, and how close to the job site they were when they started their day. But we also have the ability to manually generate a check in and check out by entering the date that they checked in, their check in time, and we can generate a check out at this point in time or just leave them checked in. This way, if someone forgets to check in at the beginning of the day, you can log their check in for them. All entries submitted, whether from the mobile app or from inside the web browser, will show up in the review time screen. From here, you have the ability to approve time entries, but also edit and delete entries as necessary. If we approve entries, they'll start showing up on different time reports throughout Noify. But before time is approved, we have the ability to edit each time entry and we can change the amount of time, its cost to the job, or what job it was tracked against. We'll make a change to this time entry and see it reflected in our reporting on job costing throughout the system. If any entries were made in error and need to be deleted, you can check the box next to the entry and click Delete Selected. This will remove the entry from the system. And if you need to adjust multiple entries at once, you can check all the boxes, click adjust selected and do things like set it all to the same time or add or subtract a number of minutes from every entry that's been selected. Once you've made all of your adjustments to your time entries, you can hit the box again and then approve all of these entries. If you need to run reports on time that's been submitted, you can click time reports at the top of the screen and Noify has a variety of different ways to export all of your time and labor cost data into Excel sheets and PDF reports. And now, we'll open up our project again and check on plan and track to see where we stand with our current committed cost to date versus our budget, and it's broken down into materials and labor from the time submitted. Last, we'll track the cost of subs. When we built our plumbing phase, we budgeted $5,000 needed for subcontract work. This means we can add a subcontractor to this phase, 
but we'll be able to select the sub from a list of our vendors. In this case, I'll enter in our sub, Pete's Plumbing, and Notify will prompt me for the contract value that's associated with the subcontractor. We can enter in how much we've signed with Pete's Plumbing here, and we can add multiple lines to make sure that the contract that we're entering into Notify replicates the contract that we have signed with Pete's Plumbing when we're logging bills. This is also where we'd be able to see any subcontractor documents we have on file and whether or not they're expired at this point in time. Once this is submitted, Notify will be tracking the current outstanding contract value and the amount that's been billed to date and the amount that we've paid to date out of the amount that's been billed. We can also view and send a purchase order to Pete's Plumbing for the work that we generated here. Similar to managing purchase orders, which we covered earlier, we can email this document directly to Pete's Plumbing, and again, we do have the ability to hide pricing if you're getting a quote from Pete's Plumbing instead of just sending a work order. When we receive bills against this subcontract, we can click Add Subcontractor Bill, and it'll go right to the bill entry page and reference this purchase order or work order that you generated from Plan and Track. We can enter the amount that they've billed us to date, submit this, and it'll generate a new outstanding bill for us to pay and notify. We can go ahead and record payment. In this situation, we'll log a partial payment against the bill. And when I go back to Plan and Track, I'll see the updated costing and reporting based off of the information that we've logged to date. Pete's Plumbing will show the contract value, the amount billed to date, and the amount that we've paid to date out of the bills, and it'll show a breakdown of the bills we've received so far. We can also add change orders to our contract with Pete's Plumbing if we need. So if I need to make any adjustments, I can always enter in a description, adjust the contract value, and this will be reflected the next time I'm logging a bill against their contract. You can see that the contract value is adjusted, and this could be referenced again when we're logging our next bill. With all of these costs tracked now, we'll be able to scroll to the top of Plan and Track to see our current total committed cost to date versus our budget, and I can see it broken down into materials, labor, and subcontractors, and it's time to start invoicing the client for the work completed to date. To start the invoicing process, click where it says Contract and Change Orders at the top of this screen. We'll be able to see the current contract value and the amount invoiced to date this is also the screen where we'll generate change orders to send to the client for approval before invoicing. Going down my list of line items, there will be an Add Change Order button, which will let us add a line to a live contract. We can enter in a description of the work, and then we have the ability to enter our price, just like when we were building our contract initially. And this is also going to be available for a digital e-signature just like the contract was earlier. In this case, we'll manually make the change order active without setting it out for signature. And now this will be available when we're generating our invoice for this job. You can click Invoice Now at the top right corner of the screen and Notify will prompt you for a percentage of each line that you want to invoice. You also have a variety of other options when it comes to invoicing such as using dollar figures instead of using percentages on each line, or you can enter a percentage of the entire contract value instead of one line at a time, or you have the ability to invoice a single dollar figure as a lump sum out of the entire contract value. We'll go back to method number one and enter in our percentages for each line of this invoice. As we're keying in our percentages and when we finalize this invoice, Notify will remember the amount that's been invoiced to date to make sure that no value is over or under invoiced out of the contract. You also have the ability to include additional contract information in the Display More Options menu. This pulls the right values into the invoice, and when I finalize this, I can generate and send an invoice document directly to my client via email. The next screen will let us preview the invoice document to confirm everything looks correct before sending the email out, and we can include additional settings like sending an automatic reminder for every day that the invoice isn't paid, 
and you can also get the option to collect credit card or ACH payment directly through the emails that are sent out of Noify. When the client pays this invoice, you can select Record Payment in the drop-down menu, and you can adjust the amount that they've paid if it's not the total balance, and you can also send a receipt directly to the client through Noify. This will show the new outstanding balance of this invoice, and you can click Manage Invoices at the top of the screen to see a list of all outstanding invoices that haven't been paid by your clients yet. This invoice will track as revenue associated with the job, so if we come back to our list of contract jobs, we'll be able to see a breakdown of our current revenue, current cost, and the resulting profitability of the project to date. And if I ever need to see a detailed list of transactions that make up these numbers, I can click on the name of the job to open up the job file, and I can click where it says Activity at the top of the screen, and I'll be able to see a list of every purchase, time entry, bill, invoice, and everything else that's gone against this job, and I can filter into specific parts that I need and filter out by date to get detailed reporting on what transactions are associated with this project at any point in time. I can also get job specific reports in the reports section that won't run across all of my jobs, but only within this project itself. And if I want broader reporting that runs across all of the jobs in my account, I can go to my home screen and click on dashboard to see different cards that show me information about jobs that are happening in my account such as how many jobs are active, outstanding balances, and anything else I might need to see. If you need to see printable or spreadsheet-based reports that run across all of your jobs, you can go to the home screen and click where it says Reports. From here, you can download all different types of reports that give you information such as cost versus budget, work in progress information, and also information on progress invoicing and the amount billed to date. For example, if we run a contract progress report, Noify will automatically generate a spreadsheet for me, and it will show all of my outstanding contracts and the amount that's been billed out of each line to date. Also available in our report section is the advanced reporting, where you can generate things like a work in progress report that gives you cost and revenue information across all of your jobs as a factor of time. So if you need to see a snapshot of any cost and revenue incurred in a specific time frame, Advanced Reporting can generate it and export it into a spreadsheet for your use. You also have the ability to filter out which columns you do and don't need to make this as complex or simple as you need it for your reporting. Now that we've covered how Noify can be used to get detailed job costing and financial reports, We'll cover how Noify can also help you with project management and communication with your field and customer. We'll start with task management. In any job, you can add tasks as a to-do list to assign to users in your field and they can notify you when they're completed. Inside Plan and Track, on any phase, you can click Add New Task. You can enter in a brief description of what needs to be done. In this case, we'll create a task to remind someone to order additional materials for a job and it'll also prompt for a date that this task is due, what job, what phase, and who it's assigned to. When we save this task, it'll automatically send a notification to the user's smartphone application so they can then see what they need to do and let you know when it's been completed. Noify also has the ability to create and send RFIs and receive answers all from within the system. When you're creating an RFI, you'll be able to write in a title in this case, we'll call this exit sign. You'll be able to write in a question or what your request is that you need a response on. And you can also upload documents so when you send this out to the customer, they can see what you're referencing and they can send their response with additional documents as well. Noify will also remember customer emails from their information and automatically copy them there so you don't need to look them up separately. We'll send this out and it will show that the RFI is now awaiting response. The last feature we'll cover is Noify's customer portal. If you go to the summary tab of any job, the bottom of the screen will have a button that says enable customer portal. When you enable customer portal, it generates a link 
and you can control what information about the job is visible from within this link. We'll select all options in this case so we can see the full scope of what these look like. And this link that is generated can be sent to the customer so you can share information about the status of the job, the contract value and how much has been invoiced. You can see a list of invoices and you have the ability to upload comments and documents to share with the customer through the portal. So anytime they need to see what's happening on the job, they can use this link to get an update. Aside from this video, Noify has a large number of other support resources that can help you learn how to use the software. Anytime you want to reach our support team, you can email us at support at noify.com or if you click the help button in the bottom right corner of Noify, you can search through our knowledge base of guides on how to use Noify. You can type in a question or any keywords and guides will come up, or you can click contact us and write a support ticket this way and Noify support team will get back to you via email as soon as they can. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and learn more about Noify. We look forward to working with you in the future and helping you know your business.